Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Terrible news coming out of Barcelona this morning. It looks like Ansu Fati has picked up another injury. It was reported earlier today that the 21-year-old Spanish international injured his foot in training today with the first team, obviously getting ready for preseason. Uh, and it's an injury that isn't significant enough to where he's going to miss three or four or five months, you know, like a long period of time. But it is an injury that's going to keep him out for preseason, all of preseason. And obviously, for a guy like Ansu Fati, who's trying to prove himself to the fans and to the coach and trying to earn his way back into the Barca first team, this is a very uh, significant injury for him. You know, again, the, the time period isn't, isn't very long, but for him, the fact that he's going to miss preseason, it's terrible. This injury could not have come at a worse time for Ansu Fati. And I'm very, very sad, man, because Ansu Fati, if you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, you know, like about four months back in mid-March, I made a video about Ansu Fati where I basically talked about how much promise he had and how excited I was as a Barca fan to watch him make his debut and burst onto the scene and, you know, assist Messi and score a goal against Betis, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, for me, I made that video when, when it was looking like Barca were going to sell him. You know, they, they weren't going to bring him back on loan from Brighton. That was obviously when Xavi was still going to be there and Joan Laporta and Deco, they were like, you know, we're going to sell Ansu Fati. And I thought that, I thought that at the time... That was the right decision because to me, and again, I know this sounds harsh and people might disagree, but to me, Ansu Fati is damaged goods at this point. That's just the fact of the matter. And I'm sorry, I know that sounds really, really mean, but it's the truth, man. I mean, this kid is 21 years old. It feels, it feels like he's older. It feels like he's 24, 25 because he's been in our lives for such a long time. But Ansu Fati is 21 years old, bro. I think he's still younger than Pedri or maybe they're the same age. That's crazy, bro. And again, because he made his debut back in 2018, but Ansu Fati is only 21 years old. But he has as, as, as injured a body as a 35 year old, bro. He has more injuries. Like, he, he's had more injuries in like the five years he's been an active pro footballer, like even more, like the six years than I think Messi and Ronaldo had in their entire career. That, that's how crazy is that, bro? He's already had knee injuries. He's had a hamstring injury, two hamstring injuries, actually. He had a, he, he tore his meniscus that kept him out for nearly a year. He tore it, like, he had a calf injury last year for Brian that kept him out for like 15 games, nearly three months. So Ansu Fati, this is the story of his, of, his, of his career, bro. And now with this knee injury, uh, with this foot injury, sorry, that he suffered in training today, and again, he's going to miss preseason. For other players, you know, for Frankie de Jong and for Pedri and for Araujo, it doesn't matter if they miss preseason because they're established players on the Barca first team. But for a guy like Ansu Fati, who was, you know, on the fence, and you know, Barca were going to look to loan him out again or maybe sell him, and Hansi Flick said, you know what, no, bring him into preseason. I want to see how he plays, and then maybe from there we can make a decision. That was going to be his time to prove himself, you know, to the fans and to the coach and to, to himself. And now he can't even do that. So for me, again, I know this sounds harsh, man, but at some point, you got to cut your losses and realize that, you know, you're not going to get that Ansu Fati back. The 18-year-old Ansu Fati, the guy who, the 16-year-old, the 17-year-old Ansu Fati, you're never going to get that guy back. You're never going to get that guy back. And again, it's unfortunate because this guy was one of the best taunts that I had ever seen at his age. But, you know, injury after injury after injury... It's just time to let go. And I know it's hard because he's a La Masia kid. And trust me, bro, I fell in love with Ansu Fati. Not like, uh, that sounds gross, but uh, like, you get what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the way that he put, I made that weird, actually. That wasn't weird. I made that sound weird. But anyway, uh, I was, I was, I was uh, mesmerized by watching him play. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's going to be the guy who takes the torch from Messi. Kind of like, what we feel with Lamin Jamal now, that's what we felt with Ansu Fati for so many, for, for, for a couple years. But again, the injuries just started piling up and his confidence seems to be shattered. And even, even recently when he played for Barca, you know, he's good. He still has those moments of brilliance because he has so much quality. But it just seems like his confidence is nowhere near the way... The, 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 it's not It's not in the place that it was, obviously, before. Because when you suffer so many injuries, bro, there's only so... The, the, like, you can only be... Like, there's only... There's so much... The, there's only so much mental fortitude, sorry, you can have. You know, at some point, it's going to break you. And that's just the reality of human beings. And for me, again, like I said, I know it sounds harsh, but the footballing world is harsh. And the real world is, uh, the real world is harsh. You know, when you're when you're when you work at a corporation and you don't do your job or you're missing a lot of days, they're gonna fire you. When you play at a football club and you don't you're never available, and when you are, you really aren't great per se, you're, you're gonna you're gonna they're gonna have to move on. And for Barca, you're gonna have to move on. And again, it's it's crazy because Ansu Fati, Joana Porta gave him a contract after all those injuries, so he's on insane wages. Ansu Fati makes a fuck ton of money, bro. So what club is gonna pick him up? What club is going to take the risk and actually say, you know what, we're going to take an injury-prone Ansu Fati who makes a fuck ton of money? Because the potential obviously is still there and teams a lot of times bet on potential. But, you know, it looks like Ansu Fati is turning out to be another Bojan, you know? Or maybe like a Deli Ali, a guy who had obviously moments of brilliance. Actually, Deli Ali peaked higher than Ansu Fati ever did, in my opinion. Um, Bojan, I don't know about that, but Bojan did have some good moments at Barca. But again, you guys know what I'm saying. Guys who were so promising and then injuries, unfortunately, derailed their whole career. And again, for me, I know it sounds harsh. And I know a lot of people don't want to talk about this right now because the injury just happened. So people want to be like, oh, you know, be nice because he just got injured. And I get that. But at some point, guys, we're going to talk about the reality of the world. And football is what I said. You know, it's a cutthroat, bi cut cutthroat business, you know? So... Ansu Fati, bro, I'm sorry, but 
again, with this injury, who's going to want to, you know, get him on loan or, or, or even buy him? And how much would they buy him for? You know what I mean? So for me, I don't know. It's a weird situation with Ansu right now because you see the potential there. But again, the injuries and the injuries and the injuries. It's like, bro, when can this guy catch a fucking break? And he got injured at training today, bro. In training, a foot injury. And again, this is this preseason was imperative for like the, this preseason was the most important for two, was important for two people. Hansi Flick, obviously, because he's the new manager, and he's going to come in and try and establish a culture of Barcelona, and obviously try and do that in the preseason. But also for Ansu Fati, bro, because like I said, he's a guy who's still kind of you know he was wavering. Are we going to bring him back? You know, and Hansi Flick said, you know what, I trust him. I I, I have trust in the La Masia players because we know Hansi Flick has come out and talked multiple times about how he trusts the youngsters in La Masia and how he wants to you know build from that. And he wants that to be the foundation of the team. And I think you saw in Sufati in training that, you know what, this guy still has some quality about him. And once we put him in the game in preseason, maybe he, he, he has a great preseason, we can put it, we can actually feature him on the first team. Because again, like I said, Barca's winger options are not, we're not spoiled there. You know what I mean? We have Rafinha and we obviously have uh, Lamine who, and if we get Nico, those guys are established. But then who do you have after that? You have Ferran Torres and then you have Joao Felix. And then you can play Gabi when he comes back. Gabi sometimes plays out on that left wing, but I don't like it when Gabi plays out on the left wing. I think Gabi's better as a central player. You know what I mean? So, again, we're not spoiled for riches out on the wing. So, if you bring in a guy like Ansu Fati and you maybe get rid of Joao Felix, you have, you know, you have a guy who can contribute, who can actually come off the bench. Because you saw Joao Felix and Ferran Torres, Barca used their bench a lot, especially, like, Barca used their wingers on the bench a lot last season with Xavi. And I expect Hansi Flick to do the same thing. But, again, with this injury, I mean, you just got to look back. You, you got to look at his career and say, you know, it's what, it's, he's a what-if player now. He is a what-if player. And, again, I know it sounds terrible because he's 21 years old. Ansu Fati is younger than me, bro. I'm 22, he's 21. And again, I know people call, like to call me young and people think I'm old, but I really don't, I'm not that old, dude. And I'm super these younger than me. Like I was in high school watching this kid make his debut. Like it's crazy, bro. And now he, like I just watching him like not be able to progress and not be able to take that next step in his career because he's constantly getting, he's constantly dealing with something. Like, I don't know, man. It, it, it's sad. And, you know, I thought him going to Brain was going to kind of change his career. I thought that was going to be the moment where he kind of, you know, could, could, have, could finally be healthy and not have the pressure of playing at Barcelona. Because obviously, we know, playing at Barca, the pressure is immense. So I was like, you know, he goes to Brain, a team with Roberto De Zerbi, who likes to play attacking football. You know, Ansu Fati can be featured on that team. He can play Premier League football, a, a high-intensity brand of football. And if he can deal with that, he can obviously come to La Liga and still play for Barca. Because I was still, I was still, so, I was still, I, I still had Ansu Fati stock. Like when he went on loan to Brian, I thought I was, gonna, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hold on to the stock because I think he's going to do good at Brian. But then after what he did, what happened at Brian where he wasn't great, you know, he had some good moments, but wasn't great. And then suffered another injury that kept him out for like 15 games. Like I said, it's just like, you know, at that point, like I said, you got to cut your losses. And, and, and I'm going to say one more time because I know a lot of Barca fans agree with this. When he plays, when he played for Barca, you know, under Xavi, it's not like he was letting the world on fire either, guys. You know, it was, it's not like he was coming off the bench and doing stuff, but it wasn't something crazy. And at this point, I don't know, man. I know a lot of Barca fans are like, oh, be patient. He's only 21 years old. Bro, there's a lot of, there's a lot of youngsters in La Masia who are very, very young, who are healthy, and are knocking on the door. And football is a competitive sport, man. Like life, it's the same thing, bro. If you don't perform, they're going to replace you. And there's a lot of kids in that La Masia Academy who we've seen, when they, when they get the chance, they, make, they, they can make stuff happen. So, again, there's kids in La Masia that can, that can maybe come in and, and replace them. And that's just the reality of football and, re, and the reality of life. I'm not trying to be too philosophical here or be like a fucking, I don't know, like a, like a wise guy. Like, a, like, a, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to try, try and uh, just wax poetic about life here and give you guys life lessons. But you guys know how this shit works, man. It's just I'm not, I'm not, I'm not breaking any news here. And this is, a, this is a cautionary tale for, you know, not, for, not just for, like, for Barcelona mostly, but for football clubs, man. Don't overplay your youngsters. Don't put too much pressure on them when they're so young because, and, I, and we're guilty of this as well, man. I'm guilty of this with Lamine Jamal. We put so much pressure on these young players and then, you know, it, it gets to them, whether it's injuries or mentally. And, you know, I think all that got to answer. I think the pressure mentally got to them. And I think the injuries, you know, that also contributed to it. And I think the injuries was a major factor, actually. But yeah, man, it's just, uh, I had to come on here and talk about that because uh, that was the most significant person news that I saw today. And again, it's really, really sad, man. I made a video about Ansu, like I said, in March. And I just, um, I was just, I was talking about how excited I was to watch him, uh, how excited I was when I first watched him and how excited I was to, to see his development in Barcelona. But now it's just, to me, you cut your losses, you sell them for whatever you can, or you loan them out for one more year uh, because he needed the preseason. You can't just like, what are you going to do? Chuck Ansu into a game like, like in, in the middle of the La Liga season or in a UCL game? No, he needed, he needed a preseason to kind of get his groove and, you know, kind of um, develop that wavelength with his teammates and with the coach. And now that he doesn't have that, I'm sorry, bro. It's just, it's a no for me. It's a no for me. And, uh, 
Again, a lot of Barca fans are being mean. They're saying, bro, what else is new? Like, he's always injured. I get that, bro. But you got to be, you got to have some compassion for the kid because this must be really hard for him. And we as Barca fans, we got to be better and not try and put down our own players all the time. I know I just talked about how, how we have to sell him. And obviously, that people might think that's mean. But at the end of the day, bro, this is a guy who's going probably through a lot right now. Like this like this moment, I'm recording this video. Uh, I don't know what, what time is it right now. I can't even see the fucking time. I'm blind. But anyway, I'm recording this video at some point where Ansu Fati, like when it's still daytime in Spain, wherever Ansu Fati is right now, I promise you, bro, he's not doing good mentally. And again, I know that we as football fans, we can be selfish at times and think about like, whatever, what's next? But we do have to feel some compassion for the kid because it's sad. But, but again, like I said, you got to move forward and you got to pivot and you got to find a replacement or, or, or just get rid of him and cut your losses at this point. But yeah, man. Uh, we still don't have any news about Nico Williams, which I'm kind of waiting for. You know, I'm waiting for that video. I'm waiting for the here we go from Fabrizio. So I'm hoping that comes soon because they said this week was going to be imperative. They said this week was going to be the week where we hear about Nico Williams. And it seems like it's a lot about we can't register him, register him and this and that and that and that. And we're not hearing about Dani Olmo. And we're not going to do the fucking pivot. You know, it's just uh, this week has been kind of shaky for Barca. You know, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we kind of uh, close this out because now with Ansu Hurt, you know, you could definitely use another winger, and we could always use another winger, but we need Nico Williams, man. Please bring Nico Williams to the, uh, Nico Williams to the camp, no, or to the, the Munch Week. I don't give a fuck whichever one it is. I keep saying that. I don't know why. But anyway, man, that's it. I've been yapping for too long. Let me know your thoughts on Ansu Fati down below on this injury. Do you think Barca should give up on, on Ansu Fati? Do you think Barca should give him another chance? Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And how will you remember Ansu Fati's time at Barcelona? Also, let me know that in the comment section down below. Answer those three questions for me, please. I'm, I'm giving you guys homework right now. Uh, but yeah, man, I love every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, prayer San Sufati. I hope you get, I hope it gets better soon, man. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.